Hey guys, how you doing today? Okay, I got a few little things I'm gonna show you. So what I have here, well my hair is wet, so it's dripping on there a little bit, it's a little wet there. I just put on a piece of cardstock some white Liquitex gesso and let it dry. And I want to show the ink tents blocks and the ink tents pencils and the difference between be nice if I grabbed them before I sat down. Oh gosh. The ween. Okay. And the difference between soft pastels, which are chalk pastels. They are chalky. So let's do a chalk pastel first. And we'll do a dark one so you can see. And it's red. And this is just a paper, and I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to scribble some down. I'm going to bring the camera in just a little bit. So you can see that. Okay. And that is the chalk pastel. Now, dry. You see how you can kind of smear it in a sense. Now, I do have gesso on here. You would use pastel paper. But that's how that will look. And if we wet it. I'm going to wet my brush now. It makes it, you can, you could use it almost as a watercolor. I think the Frugal Crafter did a demo on this, um, similar. So it's picking up the texture of my gesso underneath. I'm not really concerned. So that is what that looks like. And if you go over it when it's wet, you see how much darker it gets. And then you can, make that darker. So if you have soft pastels, chalk pastels, you can basically make your own type of watercolor. However, which I will show you once it's dry, they blend beautifully and they go down very smoothly, especially if you're using pastel paper, which this is not obviously just has gesso, but let's pick, let's pick a yellow color and go over it just for a second, just so you can see the blending. And they're bright, I mean, they're they're nice. So I'm just gonna use my water. And you blend them, normally you blend them dry, but I just want you to kind of see. Now you can see how the red mixed with the yellow and made an orange, but over here you can see where there's some yellow. So, you know, technically, probably for this, you know, I mean, I would have to make sure I used my gesso and smoothed it out a little bit more. But those are chalk pastels. They're soft. They are uh, wonderful to, like I said, I have pastel paper and they're wonderful to work with. Now, here comes the ink tents blocks. And I have them in two different containers. If I can open them. So I have these, about the 12 ink tents blocks that came in the package eons ago. And then I have these, which are ones that I had bought separately, colors that I wanted. So let's see what these bad boys do. Now, two things. You can also buy these, and they're called grippers. And what they are are what they are are they're like pencil grippers for your let's pick a bright one for your ink tense blocks so you stick it in that's what she said <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> i cracked myself up okay so you stick it in so you can hold on to it so your fingers don't get the chalk or the ink tense on now we're on gesso so i'm just gonna you can see how it is, and I'm going to show you two ways I use this. So I have that. I'm going to take my wet brush, just dab it off a bit, and I'm going to go in, and you can see how vivid that color is, and I will hold it underneath up underneath the light. And you can see it picking up underneath the gesso strokes where I hit the, um, where I put the gesso on very quick with a rough brush, which I would normally do a, a softer brush, so I got a better 
or a bigger brush so I got a more smooth gesso. I'm not worrying about it right now. You can also wet your brush with these and take the ink because these are essentially ink and you see that it's picking up that pet pigment and you can brush like this and a fun thing I don't know if I have any empty that are workable let me see does this work because I know I have one that I have to take apart okay so you have your I'll pour a lot of the water out you have your mister or your water bottle and you take your you know I'll spill everywhere because that's just who I am and you take your knife which I have around here somewhere I always have my knife but I cannot find my knife I'm sure I'll find my knife when I uh, go to grab something and it grabs me back okay so we don't have the knife so we shall we shall use something else we'll use a chopstick <laughs> a chopstick point and essentially what you do is you take some of these crumbs, I'll do it on here first, and you kind of scrape some of it off. And you would use, well, this is working, but you would use and could use a knife. And I'm only gonna do a little bit to show you. And then what you do is very carefully, and not the way that the water is on your paper, but make like a funnel. And you would do it on a smaller piece because you're smarter than I am. And you will pour this pigment into this. A little tap, a little tap, a little tap, a little tap, a little tap. Get all those little shavings in there. Okay. Let's see if that'll be enough. Put your lid on. Shake it up. And you can see, and I'll spray it. But the water turns. It's hard to see in the blue, but you can see in there it's a little purple. So it's going to squirt out. Some white now. Now look, when it squirts. Now I could have made this much darker than it is. Oh my God, it's pouring here. My hands are having a really hard time. But you can make your own colored sprays with these also. Now, I would put more of the shavings in this, but you can see, definitely, that's just a little bit of the shavings into your water. And you get, so you get a, this is like a three-fur, as I like to say. Let me see if I can scrape a little bit in here. A little bit more, without getting it everywhere. And it's very, it comes off very easily. Just want to make it a little bit darker. Okay. And I got a little bit down there, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll put my cap on because I have less water now. And like I say, you can control the intensity of the color. Very simply. Just want that to go up there. And there you go. You see it coming out. And now you've made your own sprays. So those are the Inktense blocks. Very cool. Like I said, you could take it off the paintbrush. You can make a spray out of it. You can buy these little uh, things that go on it so you don't get it on your fingers. Even if it's wet, the paper is wet. You just go on, you do your thing. When you're done, you pull this off, put it back in your thing, and then paint as you will. And you want it to be gessoed or on pastel paper where things are very blendable and it not, doesn't soak in. Like I said, this is cardstock. Now, okay, so we got that. And I'm going to blot up a little bit of this just so I have room for, and I know people are like, oh, they're supposed to be permanent. And I will show you that in a moment, but because we have these, I'm just going to kind of move this, but it's also taking the gesso off. I don't care. Okay. So the next thing that we have, and these are fantastic to work with. And I have to tell you 
as I do with my, um, <laughs> as I do with my, um, Dr. Martin's inks, I kind of hoard these more than I should because, as well as my ink ten pencils, because I'm always afraid that I'm not going to be able to afford them again because I bought them in a time when I was able to afford them. And uh, I wish I would have bought the bigger 48, 70, whatever pack of these ink tents because they're my favorite things in the world. And here we go. These are the ink tents pencils. So I want to do bright colors for you. Let me pick. So this is, we're just coloring. And over here is still wet a little bit. So I'm going to color a little bit here. And then let's pick up a purple so you can see the, is this is purple? Yeah. Just so you can see. And then I'll take my brush again, wet, and go in and it creates this ink. Now I'm using a lot of water so you can see you can definitely control how much water you use to get a better, um, and they blend beautifully, to get a better uh, control of the color, more to say, if you want it lighter, darker, what have you. And it kind of makes this wonderful thing. And then if we take the pink again, because I see it's fading a little bit, let's just go in here. And you can see on wa on watered down. Now I sometimes will wet this, and you can see it coming off onto the brush. Depends on what I want, how big the brush is, and then I'll go in, and it gives you a more watercolored look. So I'm just gonna kind of go in, okay, and leave it like that. So we have our ink tents blocks, which I showed you, and our ink tents pencils which are here and this is my intense pencils i think it's a a 24 pack okay and the intense like i said i bought extras sometimes if i see them on sale i'll buy colors that i don't have i also have tons of pan pastels which i'm going to start i'm going to do a project with and do something with because they just continue to sit here and stare at me as well as my india inks <laughs> I'm just weird that way. So I'm going to hit this with the heat gun. And again, you would just so better than me, you would use these, you know, whatever way. I use these in mixed media. I love them because they're permanent. The ink tents blocks and pencils, um, they give you a great, there's my knife right there. How do you like that? Right there under my nose. Now, excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color back again and I'm going to turn it while this dries because this needs a few more minutes to dry. This is not gessoed. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here and I'm going to take a Q-tip and I want you to see how nice it blends. Again, this is cardstock untreated. So this isn't the regular paper you would work on. You would work on pastel paper um, or that type of thing, but this is great to use in mixed media. And as you can see, this is dry and I'm going to hold it up for you in a minute. You can really get that spread out and it also picks up on the, uh, I got my color off still a little bit because my damn, I can't tell colors. Anyway, maybe that's a little better. You see how it picks up on the wrinkles there and it's very smooth. So if you do this on pastel paper, imagine, you know, cause it's a smoother paper, it'll be wonderful. Now, like I said, you can, blend the colors and these are just artist loft 36 soft pastels you get tons of them 
And here's our yellow, and I'll just make it around. And I'll show you this box again. All right, believe me, they're, I got this thing here, and they, it drives me nuts, and I keep pulling at it to get it out. There we go. There, now I can get it in and out like I want it. So you get all these colors, and that's a lot to play with. So they're kind of, you know, um, using a coupon, they're not that expensive. All right, if you would just get back in the box, please. Okay, Q-tip again, using a different side. I'm gonna blend the yellow. And then I'm gonna go in and blend some of the red with it. And it softens it. So if you're working on pastel paper and you're, you wanna do pastels, and a lot of people, I believe Angie's art channel, she does a lot of pastel work. So she would know much more than I. But I just want to show you that this, if you do have these, don't despair and think, oh, I mean, these are great to have. So I have that. That's dry. These are both dry. But if I take my brush, and I know I'm going to rewet the other side and have to dry it. If you take your brush and go over it some, it makes it into a type of watercolor paint. You still will have to fix it with a fixative because it won't dry permanent. It'll continue to move around. So what I'm going to do again is just dry this up. And again, the marks underneath, like if you see all the marks and everything underneath there, are from the gesso. Just because I just threw gesso on here and didn't make sure I covered it properly and I didn't do it properly, I just threw a coat of gesso in there. Okay. So while that's finishing and cooling off there, the last thing I want to show are my, these are my uh, acrylic inks not acrylic inks, I'm sorry, India inks from Dr. Martin, his, uh, Dr. Martin's India inks that I made into watercolor paint to see how they will work. So I'm going to pick a color and they're completely dry. They've been sitting here for days. This blue one, however, is Liquitex acrylic ink. And I wanted to see what their, what that was, would be like. So these are all dry completely dry. They've been sitting here for two weeks. Trust me. So I'm going to set them there. I'm only going to wet one color. Uh, I'm going to wet the Liquitex ink, which is here. Just give it a squirt like I would if I was doing watercolor. And I will do purple since I want it to show up on camera. And I'm going to leave that sit for a minute. And I'm going to probably use a different brush than the big one, than the rougher one. And I'm just going to leave them sit for a minute. Leave this. I can still feel this is a little wet over here because I want to show you guys. What am I stuck on? I'm stuck on something. Okay. Usually it's the cat rolling around in the cords, but not today because she wanted to hear me. I have my dog Spot Dimes. Spot Dimes. Okay, so over here I'm going to work. And let's go into the Liquitex paint first. Oh, I should have wet my brush first. And let's see how this comes up. Might have to sit a little longer than this. Probably should have squirted this before I started, but hey, you know. Yeah, it needs to loosen up a little bit. But you can see, here's the Liquitex Blue. 
And it's now into a water paint, watercolor paint, which is awesome because I have a million colors of these and I'm always buying a million more. And just to let you know, AC Moore, uh, at least around here, had discontinued some of their uh, Liquitex acrylic inks, you know, the ones that come in the bottle that I made the blue out of, and they um, had them on clearance. Um, at least mine did here. I didn't pick any up because I went in specifically for one thing and um, promised my husband I would specifically go in for one thing. I actually walked out with three, but that was beside the point they were on sale. But you can see the beautiful color that you get. So if you don't want to use it as a uh, dropper, you can make it into a watercolor paint. Look how cool. So you could use it on mixed media paper, watercolor paper, whatever you want, cardstock, make a background. So let me rinse my brush and go into the purple India ink. And let's see what that bad boy is doing. Mixing it up, mixing, 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 mixing. Ooh, come on, baby. What can you see? Let's see what you got coming on now. Yeah. yeah, you got it faintly. Needs to sit another minute or so. Excuse me with the sniffling. It is pouring down rain here. It was perfectly sunny this morning and it was 65. And now it, the temperature is dropping and it's pouring rain. And my body sat here. I sat here and I could feel like every degree it went down. My body's like, all right, bitch, it's, I'm coming. I'm coming. So I went and took a nice hot shower and washed my hair because tomorrow it's going to be 22 here. It's 65 today, which means everybody who has chronic illness is like me, RA and fibro and lupus and all that fun stuff um, knows what that's like when that temperature changes like that. Uh, even it going up from the 30s to the 40s and 50s here has killed me. So this is going to be... So I had a debate with myself. Should I wash my hair today? Because I have not, the fibro when I get in the shower kills me. And so I'm like, I'm going to wash my hair today in case tomorrow it's too cold. I'll just use my dry shampoo tomorrow. I know I sound like, I, I said to Annie, I said, I, I sound like an old lady. An old lady. All right. The acrylic ink. I mean, the uh, India ink clearly needs to sit a little bit longer to fully get to its potential, but you can see the color starting to come. See that light purple? That's all purple, baby. And that's the India ink. So that needs to sit another minute. Now let's do this. I'm going to dry this one more time. This is our ink tent. I know this is magical. Probably that would dry that just to dry it. Okay, so I'm going to take my other brush now. It's wet, there's nothing on it. And I'm going to go over my ink tents here with water. And you can see now it's almost dry because the back I have soaking wet from the other side. I'm not worried about it, but you see it's not really running when I go like this. Now you can see here, I did not dissolve all the pencil, so I can go back in. You want to make sure that all your pencil or your stick is dissolved, if that makes sense. So right there, it wasn't. So, you know, of course that's going to run. You want it to be all the way dissolved. And then we have here. They really are permanent. I'm not lying. I think my paper's just not all the way dry because of the underneath. Yeah, because this is still wet. But here is our pastels. And you can see the color coming out a little bit when you go over it. So unless you put a fixative over that, that's going to lighten that color that you originally put down and spread it around, which is not a bad thing if you're doing mixed media and you don't care that that blends in with what you're doing. Like I said, these usually stay um, 
completely permanent once they're completely dry. Me doing it here with the heat gun isn't doing it justice, but you can see you still get, you know, the purple might spread a little bit because like I said, it still has some pigments in this gesso that I did crappily. But what I will do is I will set this aside and um, so when it's completely dry in my next video, I'll show you and show you how it, uh, how it does that when it's completely dry because it's just clearly not completely dry. And I don't, it's like icky here and I don't feel like sitting here drying it all the way with the heater. The thing. Heat gun. Can't think. All right. Come on, purple, be my friend. Don't want to be my friend. I'm going to pour out the water. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it needs to sit to soak in there a little bit more. What about you, little green? Will you work? Yeah, they need to soak more. That was an experiment. So the Liquitex worked well. And it's still even, it even is still, uh, what? But because it's not, uh, the Liquitex ink is like a acrylic based ink, you're going to get like the skin and all with it too. I don't care just adds pieces or you just take it off. Like when it peels up from the plastic, this is what I want and it's driving me mad. Yeah, that's hard. By the way, this has nothing to do with the Derwent things. This is just me being wanting some color here. Like I said, I could see it vaguely. But it just needs, I think, I should have probably wet it before I started and then done that. So, anyway, that is where that is right now. And that will be another day uh, of me working with the, um, I like to call them Doc Martens, but um, the uh, India inks. And I will wet these prior and then bring down all the drippers and do that. And this, like I said, this is the ink tents and everything. And you can go over, like I said, here we go. Oh, man. Since this is still damp and not drying all the way, you can go in and paint and, and color even when it's wet. And put in some color, depending on how. And you can see where it's wet. Let me do that. Do some green over the purple. Yeah, it's still, I hate when things stay wet. Why can't, it's damp here, it's humid too, which does not help things at all. That's the red right here. Ooh, fancy schmancy red. So I'm just gonna add some more color so then the next when we come back, you'll know. And I wanna make sure I get it all. Now, if you're doing a whole page, you want all that ink that I just put on there. And you want it around. And I'm going to take the bigger brush for the blue. But I mean, look how fluid it is. It's absolutely beautiful. And the fact that you can make it into a spray or take the color from the piece itself, from the chalk or whatever they call it, the block itself is absolutely phenomenal. Let's make some red. I mean, look at that. And the more you spread it out. So I mean, it's gorgeous, deep, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous color. And I even, I'm going to tell you what, I'm not hating on this. I'm not hating on the way it pulls down on the gesso, that color. I like that for a mixed media background. But I'm just going to re-wet, like I said, and then I'm going to leave dry. And then we'll see. We'll leave some, like, white spots. And after this is dry, 
the next video we will sit and play <clears throat> and see once it's fully dry because like I said it's not fully dry and I hate when that happens I love the way it goes on when it's wet now I'm just starting to play because I'm just being weird and you can do it sideways too you don't have to do it as a point you can definitely see that and let's uh let's see let's spray it And it'll dissolve the pigment and we'll leave it drip. Drip. So these are a great investment. If you do mixed media and you can afford them, I say go for it. Like I said, I'd like the bigger pack. One day, maybe. But I'm happy with, you know, the ones I have. Let me just spread this out a little bit. And you could see because it's cardstock, it's like about ready to say like, okay, enough with the water. Because even though you just said me, I'm about done with the water. So, okay, I'm done. I'm done playing. But that is Inktense Blocks. That is the Inktense Pencils. They are essentially ink in a block. Um, once they dry, they are absolutely permanent. Um, but this is, like I said, the, uh, soft pastels. I got the 36th, uh, one of the soft pastels. You can get great looks with that too. Um, you, once you do do your drawing or whatever with the soft pastels, you should, uh, most definitely fix it with a fixative. Uh, if you're doing it in your art journal, you can use aerosol hairspray, um, you know, if you're just playing around playing with them, but if you're doing something that you're going to sell or you want for longevity, use like Krylon workable fixative because once you spray it, you uh, set what's underneath and then you can work on top. So it's great. I love it in mixed media. I love using it for many things. You use it for your pan pastels. You can use it for your uh, soft pastels. Um, I, I can do it now on here. Um, if this was <coughs> watercolor pencils, I could put it on here. And this would stay if it were watercolor pencils, and then I could work on top of it. So, I mean, you know, workable fixative is great. But this we will come back to in another video to show you once it's completely dry. Um, and we'll pull the color down this way to where it's clear to see if it, uh, like I said, um, is permanent or not, which I know it is because I've used them a million times. But just so you guys see. So that is it. I hope this was helpful. And um, I didn't blab too much because I'm kind of uh, icky today. So I just wanted to show what the ink tents are like and what the ink tents pencils are like. They're essentially ink once you wet them and they are permanent. And you can use your soft pastels. Uh, like I said, the Frugal Crafter, if you search her name on YouTube, she's done a couple videos about it. And goes into more detail than I, um, but I did want to just show, you know, what they're able to do, and when they're dry, how they don't move. Now you can see this is still definitely wet, as I'm picking up some of the color. So if I went on there now, it would still move. So that's why if you're doing if I'm doing a background and I want to go on top of these ink tents with more ink tents, I would let this completely dry and then work on top so you still have those bottom base colors. It'll make it go back more into the back of the background and what you put on top will pop more, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So I hope this was helpful to some level and I hope you all have a great day. And as always, be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. And, um, that's about it. I think <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Bye.